All right, this is the teardown of the CVS Pharmacy automatic blood pressure machine. Uh, the machine, uh, which you can see there, includes the device itself um, and a cuff as well. And you can also purchase additional features that go with it that include a uh, DC wall adapter. So this can run on both battery power and wall power. Uh, for the purposes of this demonstration, we just have it with batteries. Some things to keep in mind when you're taking this apart is that internally there are five different types of screws. Uh, it's very important to keep track of them all and where they go. Uh, save yourself some time later. Another thing is that the tubing is very delicate. Uh, internally you want to be careful with it and they also have many different connections so just be careful that you know what goes where. Additionally the device will run perfectly well with the casing off so if you want to do some testing uh, taking the casing off and not having to put it back on again, that's perfectly okay. Uh, what you'll need for this is a small Phillips head screwdriver. Anything bigger than this won't work, the screws are too small. And potentially a flat head screwdriver to help pry the casing off, it takes a little bit of work. And potentially a magnet to help you catch dropped screws that go in the machine. The first step is to take the batteries out of the back of the device. Uh, there are four AA batteries, they come out Pretty straightforward. And the next step is to remove the tubing that connects to the blood pressure cuff, just for your convenience. All right. Step two is to take the external casing off. Uh, this, like I said, can be done with a um, flathead screwdriver. It takes a little bit of work to get it off, though. Um, if you work at it, you should be able to get it. Third step is to unscrew the circuit board on top. There are three screws, and it, make sure that you know in what order you took them off and where they go. They're all different. Uh, the next thing to do is just to take it right out. It'll pop right out once the screws are done. But you need to watch the wiring and the tubing because it's all kind of connected in there really close. So um, it's best for you to take off the tubing that attaches to the circuit board so that you can get at the internal components. And to note that the adapter will come out of its slot, but you can put it right back in. Pretty straightforward. All right, the next step depends on what you're looking for. If you are looking to mess with the tubing, you want to unscrew that. If you want to unscrew the motor, uh, you can go that route. We'll start with the tubing. There are two more screws that contain the tubing and how it connects. Just make sure you keep track of those. Those are the smallest screws in the device. Very difficult and easy to lose. The tubing device has uh, many connections. Uh, there are two external connections, one that goes to the motor and one that goes to the circuit board. Um, all of them you can take off, make sure that you know what connects where if you do disconnect them. Uh, you can pull the, the um, actual tubing out and inspect it for kinks or leaks that could potentially cause an issue. Uh, make sure you just put it back in its proper orientation when you're done so that you don't um, have any issues with the tubing later on. Uh, you can also take out the motor. Again, it's two screws and a piece that contains it. Again, these are also different sizes. Make sure that you know which ones are which. If you decide to remove the motor and perform some testing on it, for instance, hooking it up to a power supply to see if it performs adequately, make sure that you put it back exactly where you have it. Everything's a little tight in there, so if you don't put it back as far left as it is, um, you won't be able to fit the adapter and the appropriate wiring in. Uh, additionally, if you take out the motor, note that there is a connection here in the front that does need to go back in place when you're done. Uh, the last thing to check for, other than the motor, and the kinks in the tubing is that there are good connections. Um, everything should be soldered to the uh, circuit board and if any of those solders are uh, together, if there's a short or if they're broken, it won't work.
correctly. So make sure that everything is properly attached. Um, if everything looks good on the inside and you've performed your testing, you can put everything back the way it was in the reverse order. We'll start with the motor since we took that out first. It can also be helpful to have someone else hold the circuit board while you screw in uh, the different components. Next, we'll screw in the tubing. Um, at this point, you don't have to connect the tubing to the circuit board. Just make sure you do that before you put everything back in. But it goes in just the way you took it out. Put the little um, connector over the top and the two screws back in. This is uh, the hardest part to put back together just because everything's so small. The next step is to put the circuit board back on top. And there are uh, plastic connections. It should snap right back down. Um, however, make sure that everything internally is connected and that the adapter is seated before you um, screw everything back in. There is a slot on the side of the circuit board that you can see where all the wiring can go for your convenience. Helps to have everything in that one spot. All right, and there again should be three screws in the circuit board, um, one in the top left hand corner, one in the um, top right hand corner, and one kind of in the middle on the bottom. Um, make sure that everything is screwed in before you put the casing on. Um, it'll snap right back on again. And then plug in the tubing to the blood pressure cuff and reinsert the batteries um, before using. When you put the uh, AA batteries back in, uh, there's a diagram on the device. It should beep. I don't know if you heard that, but it should beep to indicate that there is power to the device. And on the front, the time should be displayed in the upper uh, right-hand corner. You, if you hit the Start button three times, it will take a reading. And if your blood pressure cuff is not hooked up to a person, it will not inflate and it should read an error message. If none of those things happen, if the motor isn't vibrating and there's no display, something isn't connected internally. All right, that is the teardown uh, video for the automatic blood pressure machine, and I hope that was helpful.